it's hot in here. Today it's not about flying, today it's about different types of pilot licenses. I will tell you more about private pilot licenses, commercial pilot licenses, and professional transport pilot licenses. I will tell you more about different standards like ICAO, EASA, or FAA. I will tell you if there is any difference and why there are differences. Three, five. Two, three, clear for takeoff. I'm back in hotel, so let's try to talk simple about different pilot licenses that exist and who issued those standards that you should follow in order to get one of those licenses. So. There are three types of licenses, private pilot license, what it basically means that you can own your airplane and you can fly yourself or your family wherever you want and you don't earn money from flying. You have to have um, not that much theory lessons, you should fly for about 50 hours, pass the exam and you can get your license. The second type of license is commercial pilot license, CPL. You should learn more and uh, you should fly for about 200 hours in order to get that license. And it allows you to fly as a commercial pilot. What it means is that you can earn money from flying. So you can work, work for the airline and uh, you can um, start your career in aviation. The third type of license is ATPL, Airline Transport Pilot License. It allows you to fly as a commander, as a pilot in command on an airplane. So it's the highest license that you can get. And now let's talk about those guys who issue the standards and the rules and that you should follow in order to get the license. So. There is the main organization called ICAO, International Civil Aviation Organization. It was established back in the days in 1944 and right now there are about 200 member states. I think about 191, but it's not important. So they issued the rules that you should follow. So this member state that should follow these rules and they actually should not be less restrictive than uh, those that are issued by ICAO. They can be more restrictive, but in any case, if there are some differences, they should inform ICAO about any difference. There are also other countries that issue their own rules based on ICAO standards. For example, like in US, FAA, Federal Aviation Administration Rules, or like in European Union, EASA, European Aviation Safety Agency. What it basically means is that any country in the European Union follows the same standards issued by EASA, by the European Commission or whatever. So what it basically means is that a pilot from Portugal can easily go and fly the airplane in Germany, or a pilot from Germany can go and fly the airplane in Greece, or basically to work in any airline in Europe. So why do they do it and what it basically means? Well, it means that, that if I have a ICAO standard license, I just cannot go and fly on any of European registered airplanes. Does it really mean that I cannot fly them? Well, I can. Does it mean that aerodynamics in Europe are different from any part of the world? No, it's the same everywhere. So what should you do? You should go and validate your license in one of those countries. But even though they give you only one year, so then you have to start the conversion process. So that's what I did last year. I have to pass uh, foreign exams again. I kind of prove to myself that I still remember and know something. But anyway, I, I think and I'm sure that there should be some credit towards experience because can you imagine 50 year old pilot with about 20,000 hour experience passing again the foreign exams? I don't really think it's fair and necessary. But anyway, what I found out is that in Europe you can get a limited amount of class classroom hours and you can study at home. So. Well, it makes things easier, but when I, what I want to say that there are some pretty uh, famous programs with the European questionnaire banks that are used in aviation authorities. So, for example, what I mean is that you cannot be the smartest person in the world, so you just learn the answers, you go to authorities and you pass exam. Does it really mean that you are very educated? Well, not really. The only thing it can, it, it can mean is that you have a very good memory. So I really think that these European standards, they are not highest standards, like really, because I met different guys and, uh, well, I don't want to say anything, but um, they should go and learn more. So I try to keep it simple and I know that talking is boring. So right now let's, let's watch one of the visual approaches and that's it.
135, runway 23, clear for takeoff.